Representatives from countries around the world are in New York for the United Nations General Assembly. President Joe Biden spoke about his foreign policy platform. He touched on the importance of climate change and continuing support for Ukraine. In his closing remarks, Biden encouraged the assembly to work together. Will we find within ourselves the courage to do what must be done, to preserve the planet, to protect human dignity, to provide opportunity for people everywhere, and to defend the tenets of the United Nations? Biden is the only leader from the five nations with permanent seats on the U.N. Security Council to speak before the assembly. The heads of China, Russia, France and Britain all decided to skip the event this year. Well, Biden is speaking at the U.N. in the same day five Americans detained for years in Iran finally made it back to the U.S. Their plane landed just before dawn at a U.S. Army base in Virginia. Natalie Brandt has the latest. Siamik Namazi, first off the plane, took a step toward freedom, closed his eyes, and drew in a breath. He was one of five Americans incarcerated for years in Iran on unsubstantiated charges of spying. His family was waiting with open arms on the tarmac. Real hero of this story, surviving eight years of brutal treatment, but never, never losing hope. Freedom! The former prisoners and their family snapped a group photo before heading off for medical examinations. They include two businessmen, an environmentalist and a former U.N. worker. In exchange for the release, President Biden granted five Iranian nationals clemency and the regime will have access to nearly six billion dollars of unfrozen Iranian oil assets held in a restricted account in Qatar. That move has drawn criticism from some lawmakers on Capitol Hill, including Senator Marco Rubio, the top Republican on the Senate Intelligence Committee. Now, elements all over the world realize we can get something in exchange for Americans. Let's take some. The Biden administration insists the U.S. Treasury will be able to ensure the funds are only accessed for humanitarian needs like food and medicine. So the money will get parceled out over the course of years here. It's not like they're going to have some big windfall of cash that they can now apply somewhere else. But Iranian leaders have said the money belongs to the Iranian people and they'll use it however they choose. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Washington. The Iranian president also made his way to the United States as well. President Rossi is expected to address the assembly. Protesters met outside the U.N. headquarters in defiance of his appearance. The gathering marked the first anniversary of an uprising in Iran that started when a woman was killed for violating a mandatory headscarf law. Protesters say they will have a week-long demonstration. Well, the U.S.-Iran prisoner swap brings up the obvious question, who were the people that were exchanged? First up, Siamak Namazi. He is an Iranian-American businessman accused of collaborating with a foreign government. Then there's Ahmad Shargi, who Iranian officials arrested in 2018. He was born in Iran, but left the country as a child. He was accused of espionage when he came back. And finally, Murad Tabaz. He helped uh, found the Parisian Wildlife Heritage Foundation. He's been sick with cancer during his imprisonment. U.S. officials say the final two Americans wish to stay anonymous. Well, the Iranian prisoner exchange is the second major prisoner exchange that the Biden administration has undertaken. Of course, you'll remember WNBA Brittany, a star Brittany Griner coming back to the U.S. last December. Russian authorities imprisoned her on drug charges for months. The exchange freed international arms dealer Victor Bout. The swap was controversial because of Bout's reputation as what he has been known as the merchant of death. It also didn't include retired U.S. Marine Paul Whelan, who has been in Russian custody for nearly five years. Well, with these two recent major prisoner swaps, you might wonder about the history of prisoner exchanges. So let's verify. Let's verify. Has the U.S. swapped prisoners with Russia before? Our sources are the White House, the National Air and Space Museum, the FBI, and the book Spycraft Secrets and Espionage A to Z. Prisoner exchanges aren't a common occurrence, but they do happen. One of the first major prisoner exchanges was in 1962 between the U.S. and the then Soviet Union. The U.S. traded a KGB spy in exchange for two Americans, an Air Force captain and a student. The exchange was later dramatized in the Tom Hanks movie, Bridge of Spies.
In 2010, the U.S. released 10 Russian spies in exchange for three Russians who spied on behalf of the United States or United Kingdom, and a fourth Russian who was suspected of being a double agent. And more recently, in April, an American convicted of assaulting a Russian police officer was released in exchange for a Russian drug smuggler. So, yes, the U.S. has swapped prisoners with Russia before. The United States has also been negotiating the release of Paul Whelan, a former Marine imprisoned in Russia for spying, but no deal has been made. And while we have not yet succeeded in securing Paul's release, we are not giving up. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. And of course, if you have anything that you want us to verify, you can always email us here at WFMYNews2.com.